The last operational molten salt reactor shut down in the United States in 1969. It ran in a remote location. Research documents were kept in a walk-in closet. For three decades, we didn't even know this was an option. Then in 2002, Ornell's molten salt documentation is scanned into PDF and made accessible to some NASA employees. 2004, Kirk Sorensen delivers CD-ROMs full of molten salt research to national labs and universities. Dr. Per Peterson receives a copy. 2006, Kirk moves the scanned research onto his website. 2008, molten salt reactor lectures begin at Googleplex, hosted on Google's YouTube channel. 2009, the very first thorium conference is held. Wired Magazine runs a feature story on thorium. 2010, American Scientist runs a feature on thorium. International thorium conferences begin. Server logs show Chinese students downloading molten salt reactor PDFs from Kirk's website. 2011, China announces their intention to build a thorium molten salt reactor. In the U.S., Flybe Energy is founded. Transatomic Power is founded. 2012, Baroness Bryony Worthington tours Ornell's historic molten salt reactor experiment, which has never been made open to the public. Kun Chen visits Berkeley, California, telling us 300 Chinese are working full-time on molten salt reactors. 2013, Terrestrial Energy is founded. 2014, Thorcon is founded. Moltex is founded. Seaborg Technologies are founded. Copenhagen Atomics are founded. 2015, India reveals their new facility for molten salt preparation and purification. A flood of technical details and technology assessments are released by molten salt startups, including Lifter EPRI, a collaboration between Flybe Energy and Southern Company to assess technological readiness of Flybe Energy's molten salt breeder reactor design, the Lifter. China announces that now 700 engineers are working on their molten salt reactor program. 2016, Peter Thiel, an investor in the molten salt startup Transatomic Power, contributes over a million dollars to Donald Trump's 2016 presidential campaign. Miriam Tonloto releases a feature-length documentary about molten salt reactors called Thorium, the Far Side of Nuclear Power. Dr. James Hansen tells Rolling Stone magazine that we should develop molten salt reactors powered by thorium. Oak Ridge discovers actual film footage of the molten salt reactor itself. Produced in 1969, it was forgotten in storage for over 45 years. It offers up our first and only glimpse of an operating molten salt reactor. 2017. To propel this new era of American energy dominance. First, we will begin to revive and expand our nuclear energy sector, which produces clean, renewable, and emissions-free energy. President Donald Trump observes nuclear power is both a renewable resource and an emissions-free source of energy. A complete review of U.S. nuclear energy policy will help us find new ways to revitalize this crucial energy resource. And I know you're very excited about that, Rick. HR 590, Advanced Nuclear Technology Development Act, is passed through the House of Representatives. Flyb Energy reveals Lifter 49, a new two-fluid reactor designed to turn thorium into life-saving medical isotopes. Just like original Lifter, it is a machine that recycles wasted material such as mine tailings, coal ash piles, and now used fuel rods into enormous amounts of energy. Back in the 60s, Alvin Weinberg saw the molten salt reactor as a means of addressing energy pollution and the need for clean water. Power centers would co-locate energy-intensive manufacturing and small modular reactors. Surplus power would be sold to nearby communities. He knew energy was the ultimate raw material. The more energy you have, the easier it is to recycle and use virgin materials more efficiently. Given enough power, we can pull carbon right out of the atmosphere or ocean. China announced their plans to develop and commercialize a thorium-fueled molten salt reactor in 2011. I'd finally like a president of the United States to know what molten salt reactors are and why they are.